now let us get into dax functions because we are done with data model let us create some measures and calculated fields that are required for creating some of the reports later on one key difference between excel formulas and dax you, you must be already aware of it excel formulas are applied on every cell if you have a column in that if you have multiple cells inside excel the formula is written inside every cell and then you try to drag it whereas dax if you are writing a dax formula that formula is applied on the whole column it doesn't work on row by row or cell by cell if you want to make it work on cell by cell or row by row you have to write the dax formula differently by default almost all the dax measures work on either full data or full column let us get into creation of some of the dax measures let's go back to our power bi dashboard we haven't yet created any dashboard that is our blank one okay. what if i want to know the quantity sold by each year okay i want to know first of all where is year data year data is in dates column okay First of all, 2019, 2020, those two data sets, I don't need them. And the sales data is the place where quantity is there. And if I want to know what is the quantity sold by each year. So go to the dates column and then here you have year. Okay. You can take either short year or directly you have year. Okay. Take this and then make it like a column. As usual, what we need to do, we need to format this, go to format your visual values, make it as size 14 and then uh, headers, column headers, make it as size 14. After that, go to style presets and then try to take it as uh, alternating rows. Does that look good? I think that is good enough or let us go for sparse or condensed or yeah this is also fine okay that is the data and i want to know the quantity sold by each year okay so how do i get the quantity sold first let us create the summation of all the quantities sold by each year in fact you can directly get that also you can bring that up here and then uh, you can uh, where is that let's go to our visual and then sum of quantity sold by every year. But are these two connected dates table as well as sales table? If I bring that quantity, summation of the quantity, where is this year? Year and sum of all the quantity sold. So if I directly drag and drop it here, summation happens on the quantity, but how do you sum up year? So this is not a context based one. So how do you make it context based? You have to create a measure. So as usual, we will try to create a new measure. That new measure is summation of the quantity. It will be a simple measure. I would say quantity sold. Quantity underscore sold equal to what is the new measure? Summation of sales quantity. That is it. Now, if you create a measure like this, then this will give you the result. Then you bring that up here. And you simply bring that up here. Then it will give you the quantity sold. Now, this one, what I'll do is instead of this one column, let's bring that year column once again. Go to dates, year. It is year. Yep. And then try to don't summarize so here is our year and let's bring our new measure that we have created that measure is as of now quantity sold if you bring that up here that is sum of quantity sold in fact you don't really need to create that measure always you can also bring this up but usually these measures are useful 
when you want to like right now quantity is in this table in any table if you want to take this or if you want to use it in the context then better to create a new measure okay but it's not a rule that you have to create a measure everywhere okay now whenever you are creating measures what is a good rule that we have generally what we do is we create a new table and then we put all the measures there so let us put all the measures inside a new table so here I'm entering the data, the table name that we generally give is all measures. We would like to keep all the measures at one place, all measures. All measures and where is that all measures? New table, all measures is here. Now what I'll do is I'll take my quantity sold and put it in all measures okay quantity sold right now if you click on quantity sold right now the home table at the top measure tools the home table is sales instead of sales i would like to have it inside all measures that's it this one will go to that all measures once you do this and then this automatically this and delete this one Delete the first column, delete from the model, I don't want it, first column, and then quantity sold. All measures is coming in the first place, okay. That is quantity sold, we will use quantity sold at multiple places later on. If we want to calculate the revenue, the total sales amount per year. In the next exercise, what we want to do is we want to calculate the revenue for every year. What is the revenue? First of all, what do you mean by revenue? You will get the amount of sales by multiplying two values, price as well as quantity. For every item, for every order, for every product, price multiplied by quantity. Price is 20 rupees, quantity is 2. So 40 rupees is the revenue. Price is 100 rupees, quantity is 2. 200 rupees is the revenue. Okay, so we want to first multiply price and quantity and then sum up all those values that we are getting finally that will be our total sales to get the total sales in every row we have to multiply price into quantity. Okay, so I have created this I'll delete this first of all, let us multiply price into quantity let's call that as total sales. Let's add a new measure called total sales. My total sales is equal to summation of go to sales data where is price in the sales data there is price into in the sales data there is quantity but it is not showing sales data quantity. This is the quantity but it throws an error can you see that now usually when you try to execute it it will throw an error what is error some function accepts only column reference as one argument that means you have to give the full price as one value full quantity as one value then total sales works but price is different in every row quantity is different in every row of sales so if you go to your sales data set, if you go to your sales data set, price and quantity, price, quantity, price, quantity, price, quantity, everywhere, they are different. In every row you want to multiply. When you want to multiply in every row, later on you take the summation of all of them. If that is your requirement, when you want to multiply in every row, finally you want to make the summation, then either you have to create a new column but when you create a new column that can be used only in this one. But if you want to replicate in every row, instead of using some function, if you want to do row wise calculations, there is another function. There is another set of functions called X. You write some X function. This works. If you write some X, that means in every row I want to take, I'll go to the sales data. And then in sales data, I would like to take so try to type sum x, sum x, let me put sum x and then what is the data set name? 
the sales is the data set name. First, you have to write the data set name. In that data set, sum x goes to one data set. In that data set, it will do the row wise calculation. So, in sum x, there are two parameters. First, mention the table. My table, data table is sales. That is the table. In that table, what is your expression? You want to multiply two columns? Yes. So, go to sales price multiplied by sales quantity. So, sum x and sum are different. Sum means Sum is a general measure that works. Generally, when you take any general measure that works on the full data. And we don't want to calculate on full data. We want to do row wise calculations. For row wise calculation, this x is extra. Sum x, count x, or uh, average x, something like that. Okay. So once you execute this, in every row, price will be multiplied by quantity, then total sales is created. Now, if you bring that total sales or total revenue in 2018, how much? 2019, how much? 2020, how much? Let me also make this column headers also bold. Column headers bold so that it looks a good even this one also. Let me take this and try to format painter that is working. Okay. Got it? Sum X. Count X, average X, they are known as iterator functions. What do you mean by an iterator function? An iterator function is a function that works on every row instead of the full column or the full data set. Okay. That is known as iterator function. If I want to know the profit for every year, if I want to know here, I have displayed the sales. In 2018, what is sales? In 2019, what is sales? In 2020, what is the sales is given here? What if I want to know the profit instead of sales? So what is the formula of profit? The product sale price minus product price. Okay. The product sale price. Where is the product price? Where is the product sales price? This is the actual product sales price. But what is the original price of the product? If you want to know the profit, you have to know the original price of the product. The original price of the product is in product information. If you go to product information, here product price is given. Product price is 80 rupees, but product sales price is 100 rupees. Then 20 rupees is a profit into quantity. Quantity is 2. 2 into 20, 40 rupees is a profit. Once again, how do you get to know the profit? How do you get to know the profit? You take the product, product sales price, how much you sold it for, minus product manufacturing cost or product price original price into the quantity product sales price we sold it for 100 rupees we bought it for 80 rupees and we made three such products so that is like 20 into 3 the profit is 60 rupees it's like that so here also we have to do row by row here also we have to do row by row calculations it has to be a iterator function again isn't it because you have the price you have the price here in every row that changes and you have to go to this table which is a related table you have to take the product price and subtract them and then multiply with the quantity and quantity cannot be the same in every row isn't it so if you want to do row by row calculations what is the function that you have to use for row by row calculations you have to use x anything sum x or average x or something like that so let's go to new measure let us calculate profit look at my formula for profit my profit is equal to try to use sum x the table name is sales table and then in the sales table what i'll take is i'll take the sales price minus product price product price is in a different table when product price is in a different table, if it is not in the same table, how do you access it? Do you remember if you have a measure or if you have a column that is in some other table, you have to use that function related. Make a note here. We have already used related somewhere else. So use related and then what is a related product info, product info, product price, product price. That is what I want to access. So this is sales price minus product price. Let us close the parenthesis. This is the 
full information that I will take. Sales price minus product price. Look at the parents carefully. Make sure that you are not making any mistake here. Into quantity. Here I will get the profit into profit for one item into quantity. Quantity also in every row. So I will write sales data. Take the sales data and put quantity. Finally, end this. So these parentheses, sometimes you tend to make the mistakes. Try to carefully write this. And then if you execute this, your profit is ready. Profit for year. So what I'll do is I'll put that profit here. Summation of all the profit. Profit per year is this much, this much, this much. This is the sales. This is a profit. Okay. What we can do is we can do it either this way or we can do it in some other way also. Not at all a problem because we have already multiplied quantity with uh, price, isn't it? We already multiplied with that. So we can use that total sales and use that in this formula as well. Let us rewrite this formula in a different way. Okay. There are two, three ways of doing the same thing. So let me define that as profit one. Profit one. Doing the same thing again with a different formula. Profit one is equal to, I have already calculated the total sales. What is total sales? Product. Total sales is what? Price into quantity. Total sales minus what is the product price? Okay. So what I'll do is, first of all, I have to put sum X though. That formula, you have to put it. Sum X, then go to sales data, sales table, comma, total sales. From the total sales, from the total sales, I would like to subtract product price into quantity. So product price is in a different table. I'll write related. And then that is product price. And then close it. This is the closing bracket that people tend to miss. From the related, I extract this one into go to the sales data, get the quantity. This is just a different way of writing the same formula, isn't it? Earlier, I have subtracted product price from the original price that was sold price but anyway that was taken care in total sales total sales minus product price into quantity this was total sales this is the total manufacturing cost sales minus cost will give you the profit even that profit will also be same here so even if i bring that one here profit one that will also be same so either you can write profit or profit one whichever is the formula doesn't really matter okay in fact, this is all yearly data. You don't need to create so many tables like this. Within one table, I can keep all of them, isn't it? Within one table, you put uh, quantity sold, total sales, and then uh, profit. You can put all of them. Yeah. Make it larger one. Yeah. Even bigger if you want to make it. Then go to values, increase the size. And then go to headers, increase the side if you like to. What if I want to know the percentage of profit? I want to know percentage of profit. How do I calculate that? What do you mean by percentage of profit? Profit divided by overall sales. Let's say overall sales is 100 rupees. Profit is 20 rupees. Percentage of profit is 20%. Overall sales is 100 rupees. Profit is 10 rupees. Profit percentage is 10%. So how do you calculate profit percentage? Profit divided by sales. That is easy. Simple. New measure. Profit percentage. Profit percent is equal to profit percent equal to profit. How much ever profit that you are making? Yes. Divided by total sales. Total sales. That is profit percentage. So how much is the profit percentage every year? How do I get to know that? Just drag and drop here. Total sales divided by profit and all that. Now this profit, you need to make it look good. How do you make it look good? You click on this profit percentage. 
and then make it like a percentage okay make it like percentage that looks good isn't it yeah 32 percent 32 percent 32 percent everywhere it is 32 32 32 okay the last three years 2018 2019 2020 that is a profit okay next what if i want to display the last year sales what if i want to display the last year or last month or last year sales apart from this sales i also want to display the last year sales i want to create another column i want to here we can directly see but in a visualization later on i want to show this year sales and i also want to compare it with the last year sales let's say i want to create two bars where one bar displays this year sales the second bar displays last year sales here it is anyway available but what if i want to compare those two bars and show them so how do you find the last year sales okay so here this total sales indicates this year how do you get the last year sales let us create a new column new measure new measure is last year sales how do you get last year sales total sales is this year so for this you need to take it out of context if you take 2019 in this column everything will be considered for 2019 only the context year is 2019 the context year is 2018 the context year is 2020 always these measures are context based but how do you take this one context back how do you remove the context calculate anything out of context you need to use calculate formula you write calculate as soon as you write calculate everything will be taken out of context that means 2018 2019 2020 these will not be given preference okay then what i want to do is i want to calculate total sales i want to calculate total sales and then what is my filter here total sales for what do you want to calculate total sales for this or this or this? No. Out of context. Which context? What is the filter that you want to apply? So there is a function called same period last year. Same period last year. Go to the dates data. Go to the dates data. Take my date. Same period last year. You take it. Okay. So take total sales, but not in this one. And which filter I'm applying? Go to same period last year in the dates, dates data. If you go to the same period last year in that context, I want. So go to the dates data, go to the last year and then calculate the total sales. If you give that, then it will give you okay, last year sales. Check this out. Year is 2019. It is giving you 2018 sales. Year is 2020. It is giving you 2019 sales. It is giving you one year back data. If I go to dates data, if I add 2021, if 2021 also appears here, for that it will not show total sales, it will show the previous year sales. Okay, same period last year. This calculate is an important function that is used for removing the context. Everything is context based. That means if you are in 2019, this total sales generally is calculated for 2019 only. But being in 2019, how do you get 2018 data? By using calculate function. Being in 2020, how do you get 2019 data? By using calculate function and mentioning the filter that you want to give. Let us do few more examples related to calculate. Then it will be very clear to you. But meanwhile, before proceeding, I'm assuming that you are pausing everything and you are practicing along with me before you proceed, isn't it? Yep. What if I'm interested in cumulative sales until this date? Until today, what is the sales? That is what I want to calculate. Cumulative sales until today. That means this is the sales today. This is the sales today. If I want to know the cumulative sales, let's say instead of just year, let me put a quarter also. Then it will give you a better idea dates and then is there any quarter year and quarter somewhere it was there quarter and year okay instead of year let me put quarter and year this is quarter and year 
okay q1 and all that it is coming 2019 2020 2018 19 20 this quarter and year is not good i think we want to take year first, then quarter. Or let's carry on with this year. We'll be able to tell the story from here. Now, until this point, I want to know the sales. That means until 2019, what is a cumulative sales? What do you mean by cumulative? Cumulative means yesterday you sold 10 items. Day before yesterday, you sold 10 items. In the last seven days, how much have you sold? Until that point, you add up everything. Today, you sold these many items. Add that up, up. Like, until this point, what is your sales? Until this point, what is your quantity? So, if you want to know the cumulative sales, what is the formula? Again, you have to use calculate function here because cumulative means until this point, we have to take something out of context. Out of context. So, cumulative sales is equal to type calculate. Use calculate. And then in the calculate, I want to calculate total sales. That's true. But what's my filter? What's my filter here? I want to go to dates. I want to go to the dates table. Date is less than, this date is less than maximum of all the dates. Until if you are in this context, whatever is the maximum date. Until that point, I want to take all the sales. If you are at this point, whatever is the maximum date. Until that point, I want to calculate. So dates, max of the dates date. What I want to do is until this point, whatever is the maximum date, until that point, I want to calculate. If you are in this context, take the maximum date, calculate the overall sales until that point. Okay. That is the formula for cumulative sales. Whether it will work or not, easily we'll be able to find it out. If you bring that cumulative sales and put it in the table here, right after total sales, you check that out, total sales, first year is same. Second year is combined. Third year is combined. Look at this. These two are matching. Until 2020, the total sales is this much. Cumulative sales is this much. Yeah. Similarly, can you calculate cumulative profit until this year? Try it out. Cumulative profit. Profit. Profit plus profit. Profit plus plus profit until this year what is a cumulative profit how do you calculate that go to a new measure go to a new measure and then you type that as profit till date or cumulative profit profit till date that is equal to calculate sometimes this doesn't give you the intelligence it doesn't give you the drop down so then just agree with this formula just submit this formula it'll throw an error for, but from here on now it will give you this is a small bug and this is the hack for that bug calculate profit yes i want to calculate profit but under what condition where the date is less than maximum or less than or equal to you put because last date also you have to take max of even the previous formula also, it's better to put less than or equal to, isn't it? I think that's a right expression. Less than or equal to is the right expression. Yep. Let me correct the previous formula. Cumulative sales also, I'll put less than or equal to. Then uh, profit till date or cumulative profit. Let me put that right after profit. Profit till date, profit till date, profit till date. Can you understand this formula? This is the profit until today or profit till date. Okay. That is how you calculate cumulative formulas using calculate function. Calculate function is used for removing this context. Otherwise, in Power BI, everything is connected with the context. If you want to remove the context, you have to use calculate function. Let us do some more experimentation. What if apart from the total sales, I also want to show only sales from a particular region or a particular segment or a particular county. I want to show something again out of context. Right now, 2018 sales, 2019, 2020, overall sales in every region is here. There are some counties, Los Angeles is one of the county. 
only from Los Angeles County if I want to show the information. For example, if I go here, if I go to geographical data, the county, Orange County, Los Angeles County, Contra Costa County, and then San Diego County, different counties are there. What if I'm interested in showing sales as well as Los Angeles County sales? Usually you can give a filter and ask the user to select Los Angeles, then he will get the total sales for that county. But what if I want to show this as well as Los Angeles? Both of them I want to show. Then again, what we need to do is we have to somehow filter the context and tell that especially from that particular county, we want to get the information. So how is that possible? Again, we have to create a new measure. What is it? LA sales, Los Angeles county sales okay la county sales is equal to whenever you want to take anything out of context what do you mean by out of context here the whole context is 2018 19 20 what if you want to give a different segment hold together so then write calculate i want to take total sales but not the real total sales total sales I'm interested in total sales, but not in this context of total sales, not in 2018, 19, 20. I'm interested in Los Angeles County. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to give that filter. The filter is go to geographical data and where county is equal to Los Angeles. Geographical data, Los Angeles County. That's the county. Okay. Calculate total sales, geographical data, then that is LA County sales. Okay. LA County sales created, then if I bring that in. This is total sales, this is just in one county or in one place. So basically, usually if you put a measure here, let's say if you take profit, that profit is in this context, in this filter, okay. But if you want to remove that filter or if you want to take a different context, then you have to use calculate, okay? Display sales from Los Angeles County, okay? What if you want to give a different filter? I want to take LA County, but there are different products, right? If you go to the sales data or if you go to the products data, if you go to products information, sometimes I want to show everything related to product one from LA County. From LA County, Los Angeles County, I want to show everything from product one only. So I have to write this formula carefully. So let's go here, recreate that formula. First, let us copy this LA County one. Okay. Then create a new measure. New measure. Now LA County plus product one, prod one. Okay, LA County prod one sales. Calculate total sales where geographical information is this one, comma, product name, product. This is the second one. This is the second filter where product ID is it or product name. The product name is equal to product one. Product name is product one. Product. It has to be exactly same as the one that appears. Product one. That's the second filter. We have given two filters here. Okay. First filter is on geographical data. Second filter is on product one. Now that's the new column that is created. So now if you bring that in, how does that look like? LA County product one sales is this much. This is full, full sales. Sales in LA County in a particular region. Sales for in a particular region for a particular product. Now generally when the formulas are like this, when they appear like this, they will be a little difficult to read. So as a good business analyst, when you're preparing this, you have to format them a little bit. So use shift enter. And then make sure that you're formatting them and making them easy to read. Again, you go here, use shift enter, shift enter, 
enter will directly submit that shift enter so what is this doing and then you can take it up okay now when you see this formula here this is the formula first filter second filter so okay what if i want to give product one product two product three here i want to take not only la county product one i want to take product one product two product three first let us copy this intentionally i'm making i'm creating all this so that we can practice and all of us in future if we are seeing any type of these requests we'll be able to understand this easily so la county product one two three sales product one two three sales how do you get that this one is just for product one okay product one and then uh, product two product three how do you give them you have to use in operator where product name in i think we already used in operator at some other place product name in product one comma product two Once you do this, next time it will be easy for you. You can use, reuse the similar code based on this. You can write the code. But for the first time, you may have to understand this product one, product two, product three. Three products. That's the information. Now, if I get that column, this is LA County product one, two, three. This is just product one. This is product one, two, three okay now when the formula is very complex like this or especially there are some places where you may be writing this dax measure which is containing several lines five six lines then there is a slightly advanced or slightly better way of arranging the formula that is by using var where you can define where okay so let us rearrange this. So let us create a new formula. Okay. The same thing I will rearrange and create a new measure. See how am I going to write using where a lot of advanced power BI analyst will be writing the formula like this. How do they write it? Let us see. New measure. hanged for some reason it just hang okay here is the measure now first of all shift enter shift enter shift enter and then paste our previous formula so we'll come to this formula later on first create the where so what is the new measure name los angeles products prod one two three are new variable the new measure that is the name then what you do is shift enter create the first variable the first variable is filter one what is filter one filter one is equal to this is the filter one so you have to use a function called filter if you want to mention the filter filter and in filter there are two things one is the table name geographical data geographical data and no not general series geographical data filter geographical data the last one geographical data and what is the filter here the filter is in geographical data the country is or the county is los angeles county that is my first filter I'm done with the filter that is where one done then shift enter write where to where that is filter two what is my second filter it is on product id so how do i write filter Again, write filter product information is the table name. In that product information, this is the this is my filter. Okay. Filter two, filter one done. Then you have to write a keyword called return. After that, once you have defined the where's control enter, control enter calculate okay calculate total sales total sales simply follow that up by you have defined the variables filter one 
कॉमा फिल्टर टू फिल्टर वन कॉमा फिल्टर टू यू हैव डिफाइंड दिस वेरिएबल्स फिल्टर वन कॉमा फिल्टर टू दैट इज इट एंड दिस वन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड लेट्स से इफ यू वांट टू ऐड फ्यू मोर कमेंट्स कमेंट्स कैन आल्सो बी एडेड इफ यू वांट टू ऐड अ कमेंट इन योर formula you can use this double slash this is a measure to calculate this is a measure to calculate la county prod 1 comma prod 2 and prod 3 sales la prod new so basically we have created var1 var2 and then write return calculate total sales filter1 filter2 this is a kind of neat way of writing or slightly advanced way of writing so using var in uh, dax formula okay then once you submit it this will give you the same result as the previous one this formula is same okay submitted it and then click on this one and then bring that up here these two are same hmm. got it next one let us take one more example i want to again this is out of context one like instead of showing only 2018 sales what if i want to show the sales of customers with age less than 40 and only from those cities with population more than 2 lakhs more than 200000 and the product current price is more than 2000 so there are three conditions that i want to give what are the three conditions customer age is one condition age must be less than 40 and only from those cities which are having population more than 2 lakhs or 200000 and the product current price is more than 2000 with these three conditions i want to find out that sales and show it in the or i want to create a measure that will calculate that particular sales how do you do that again let us copy paste this code so that we can use this structure okay using this var filter condition we will use it okay and then try to create a new measure let's give the measure name as sales with three conditions sales with three conditions is equal to shift enter and then whatever is our previous one try to we'll try to modify the previous condition and try to add it where filter one or let's try to do it from the beginning to practice it where filter one shift enter where filter two var filter 2 shift enter var filter 3 var filter 1 filter 2 filter 3 okay and then that is equal to filter what is the first filter customer age is less than 40 customer info that is the first table customer info customer age is less than 40 that is first filter filter 2 is on geographical data filter 2 filter geographical data geographical data and uh, geographical data population customer uh, in that city the population is greater than 200000 200000 that is filter 2 and filter 3 is what filter 3 is again a filter filter what is the data set name product information product info and product price current price product info product price is greater than 2000 okay product price is greater than 2000 and then shift enter return and then shift enter calculate it's a simple 
calculate total sales only but with some filter conditions total sales under the conditions of filter one comma filter two comma filter three and if you want to write any additional comments you try to write measure created under three filters three filters based measure three filters based measure okay that's the one yep now if you execute this and then try to bring that information let's go to measures where is it sales three conditions let us see sales three conditions under these three conditions the sales comes out to be how much sales three conditions oops nothing is printed that means there's something wrong here let us check that what's gone wrong sales three conditions filter one is fine filter two is fine filter three product price product price greater than 2000 there's nothing is it maybe let us see total sales filter one filter two filter three the formula wise it looks fine but when it comes to the results wise what's the issue is less than 40 population more than 200,000 and product price greater than 2000 oh yes that looks fine to me but why this is not working the only reason could be if none of these filter conditions are met then you will not get any sales yeah it's working so product price more than 2000 there is nothing like that is there any other product price let me check product info product current price i think instead of product price we have to take current price here i think of the condition that was given to us was current price product current price is greater than 2000 that was a condition because product price more than 2000 is not available current price more than 2000 that exists and if that is the case and these are the updated values this is the final result that we want okay that's the thing now let us see how to get the running totals what do you mean by running totals sales in last two years sales in last two days sales in last seven days sales in last 30 days sales in last 90 days so if you want to show the running totals then how do you do that let us see for example first let us create a data set let us take pure date let us take the date value directly date and then simply sales date and sales where is our sales our sales is in all measures total sales now format this style preference not default style sparse does that look good let's increase the size of the values to 12 13 or something like that yeah that should be fine now what i want to know is i want to know last two days sales let's say this is until uh, you know this is january day one day two day three like, apart from this apart from jan third if i want to sum up last two days and show it here because i want to compare like how was the last two day sales and compared to that how is today sales okay how do you do that for that again when you want to change the context like usually if you want to show something in this row only this row will be considered the context of this row will be considered if you want to change the context whenever you want to change the context you have to use what is the function if you want to remove the context that is calculate function so last two days sales last two days sales is equal to calculate total sales only total sales only calculate total sales only but under some filter conditions so shift enter condition one what is condition one the date should be less than today's date or whatever is in the context so 
I would say dates, date is less than today's date or less than or equal to also you can keep. If you want to leave today and if you want to take yesterday, day before yesterday's, then you can simply say less than max of the day, that is dates, date. This formula in the beginning, it looks confusing. So basically you imagine you are at January 6th. So whatever the dates that we have to consider here to fill this last two days, what is that date we have to consider less than the max of this one. So within the given date, that is 6th January, that is the maximum until that date you have to consider. But that will calculate sum of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have to put another filter also. I don't want to put cumulative. Instead of cumulative, I have to put only last two days one. So how do I do that? Again, shift enter. Again, shift enter. The date should be less than max of today's date. That I agree. But it should be more than that. It should be greater than or equal to. It should be greater than or equal to max of dates today minus two days. Isn't it? Today minus two days. That should be the case. Last two days. So less than whatever is this row and it should be just two days back. These two summation I want to add. If you are on the seventh, I want to add five, six together. If I'm on eighth, I want to add six, seven together. So this is less than max date and greater than max date minus two. If with this condition, if you keep this formula, then if you bring that last two days sales in, last two days sales, Last two days sale, last two days sale. So here there is only one day. If you come here, there is a, this is summation of last two days. This is summation of last. Oops, it is taking only one day, is it? Let me check what is the formula here. It looks like it is not really adding up. Greater than or equal to. If it is less than greater than, it will take only one day, right? We have to take that day and before that day. If you adjust this now, this should be fine now. Check this out. Is it working fine? This is 60,000. That is fine. This is 100,000. 60,000, 39,000, almost 100,000. This plus this, 47,000. This one, 36,000 is what? That is 28,000 plus 7,000, 36,000. 54,000 is what? 25,000 plus 28,000. That is 54,000. Last two days sales. What if I want to calculate last seven days sales? It will be just a modification of this one. So what I'll do is I'll take this one and then create a new measure. Okay, is there a way to copy this? Anyway, we will just directly take everything from this one, Control A, Control Z, and then new measure. Let's create last seven day sales. Last seven day sales okay that will be everything else will be same last seven day sales seven that is it seven days instead of going two days back i'll go to seven days back here you go last seven day sales last seven days sales seven days seven days seven days okay How do you create a new table? Let us suppose we want to write a filter query or from using a table, we want to create a new table. For example, if you go to our sales table, in that sales table, you have quantity. What if I want to create a new table where quantity is more than three? Whenever we are selling more than three items, we have to create a new table. How do you do that? You can go to this home tab and then say new table create a new table and write a formula for it. So the give the new table name. Let me call that as sales underscore subset. Sales subset is my new table. And I would write filter, filter, sales, comma, sales quantity. Now again, it's not showing. So try to execute this and then it will start throwing errors then it will give you that intelligence sales quantity is more than three now that will create a new table sales subset will be a new table that will be created on the 
this one c this is a new table if you want to create a new table this is the method so if you go here you can see that sales subset being present here now what if i want to show previous time period let's say if you're showing monthly data along with this month data if you want to show the last month data or along with this year data if you want to show the last year data we have already seen and there are some date functions also we can make use of okay so let me show you an example of previous time period we have already seen one example where same period last year that can also be used or let's say if you're showing monthly sales data if you go to this one so here this is daily sales data what if we are showing monthly sales data so let's go to this table now here if i remove day then you have year quarter this is monthly sales data let me remove last two days sales this is actually last two month sales you can do it in this manner this is one way or you can also use date function date related functions or otherwise you can use the previous method that we told okay that the last two years or last two days that you can use it anyway okay now what we can do is i want to show from the total sales of january i want to show previous month sales from february i want to show january from march i want to show the previous one whenever you want to change the context again in this row you want to show some other row information you have to use calculate function as usual we will use calculate function create a new measure that is last month sales that is equal to use calculate i want to show total sales only that's all right but i want to show last month one so you can use this very useful function called date add what does date add do it will take dates as input okay i'll give the dates as input comma number of intervals like you want to show last month last to last month last to last month how many intervals back you want to go i want to go one month back that's why i'll give minus one and what is the interval that you want to go back like is it like year last year data you want to show last one day data you want to show last one month data or one quarter data so the interval is monthly okay if you do like this you can get last month sales easily okay so if i bring that in last month sales this month last month this month last month this month last month this month last month, last month sales if i put plus one the next month sales will be displayed here in fact if i just put one next month sales next month next month next month but if i want to go here the definition is last month sales data last month if you want to show last quarter data you put quarter here quarter last quarter last quarter last quarter data last quarter because here it is quarter in last quarter in quarter two quarter two quarter three quarter four last quarter data okay here we are interested in last month data only because this is monthly one it in this particular table only month value will make sense if you want to really show last quarter data remove month also and then it may make sense let's say if i remove month then if i want to show last quarter data then if i use quarter then in this table it makes sense check this out if i use quarter then last quarter sales will be shown last quarter last quarter last quarter but if you are using monthly data then last month sales it has to be month okay so like that you can use last month last year or last quarter variations these are some of the functions that are most widely used time intelligence functions calculate function filter function and all that by practice you will gain more knowledge at the end of these classes, we are going to give you multiple projects. When you are doing those projects, all these questions will be written to you. You have to write all the course. When you are writing the course, that is when you start thinking and applying all this. As of now, try to repeat these multiple times and try to practice this. That completes our section on DAX. 
we will now move on to creating dashboard while creating dashboard also we will try to see some more options i'll see you on the other side